Okay, this is going to be the file structure we'll be using for this application. We're going to have the basic index PHP page. We're going to have a admin directory folder for CSS and a folder for inclu or includes which will uh, hold the file for our database connection any jQuery or JavaScript we're going to that we might add okay so let's go ahead and uh, set up a database I'm in PHP my admin I'm gonna make a database called blog okay and then we're going to make our first table. We're going to call it post. All right. So the number of fields we're going to need one for the ID, the title. Uh, we're going to need one for the actual article. And we're going to need one for the date and time. Okay. So we need five. Alright, so we're going to do the post ID. It's going to be an integer 11. Okay. This is going to be primary index and auto increment. Alright, next we're going to need. Let's say user ID and tell which user uh, posted the article. We're going to need a title. Set that to a varchar. Uh, let's give it 255. We're going to need the body. Set that to text. I need a category. And call it category ID. Set that to end. Okay, and I think we're going to need one more field. We're going to need one for. Um, when it was posted, so we're going to do posted. This will be let's do date time. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that. All right, and we're going to need another table for the categories. Oops, spelled that wrong. Okay, we're just going to need two. We need. Category ID. Okay, that'll be N auto increment. Set that to primary. And then we're going to need the category itself. Okay, so doing this, we'll uh, be able to create our own categories. And then when we're creating the new blog post, they'll be uh, dynamically inserted into our <clears throat> to choose from in our uh, form through a drop down menu or radial buttons. But I'm probably going to just do a drop down. We're going to set this to 150 characters. Never really seen a category name that long. Okay. Save. Okay, let's make another one. Another table for comments.
this one's going to need. Hmm. We need a comet ID, user ID, post ID. You know what? No, we're going we're gonna to need the comet ID, the post ID. Then we're going to need an email address from the person leaving the comment, their name, and the comment. So we need five fields. Okay, so this would be comment ID. And again, we're going to auto increment this, set that to primary. Okay. Now we're going to need a post ID so we can know where the uh, where the comment you know which post the comment belongs to. And we want email. Add set that to Varkar. 255 name far car 255 okay and comment Let's set that the text. Okay. All right, now for the email address, we're going to set this to unique. No. You know what? We're going to leave it as is. Okay. And now for our admin section, we're going to need one more table, which will be, we're going to call this the user table. We're going to need a user ID, a username, and password, so just three fields. user ID user name password okay 30 characters I'm setting the password to 255 because we're going to hash out the password and so I want to make sure the entire hash fits I can probably narrow it down but I like to err on the side of caution okay alright so now we got our database uh, set up now I'm just going to go ahead and pause the video and, uh, and we'll pick up creating the actually first let's do this let's go ahead and set up our user credentials now okay so we want to go ahead and insert a new user I'm gonna go ahead and do TJ you know what no I'm gonna do admin and the password would be admin now you see right here under functions, I'm going to go ahead and MD5 this. So we're going to add an MD5 hash. Okay. All right. So now we've got admin, and that's our password, which which is admin. Okay. So let's go ahead and create the login script for the admin area 
Okay, so in the admin directory, I'm going to create a file called login.php. Okay. Oops. Okay. So on this page, we're just going to have a simple form. So I'm going to create an ID of container. I'm going to make a very simple, clean login form. Okay. So we're going to do form. Action. This is going to uh, submit to itself. So we're going to go login.php. The method will be post. Okay. Remember when you're creating a form for every field you should create a label. It's just good business. Okay, so username. Okay. So then we gotta do the input type equals text name username okay let's go ahead and wrap these in p tags just so it looks better Okay, now for the password. Input type equals password name password. Okay, just need a submit button. And then we can get started. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and save this. Open the web browser. see what it looks like oops forgot PHP okay might not be the prettiest thing in the world but it would do for this tutorial alright so above all that HTML stuff above the doc type we're going to check if the post submit button is clicked. By doing that, we're going to do uh, if is set post submit. Okay. So this block of code right here won't run unless this button's clicked so just to prove that to you okay so unless this button is clicked echo high uh high will not uh be echoed out so let's go ahead and refresh this nothing up here click the button high okay 
So let's see. Buttons clicked. Let's get the username and the password and store them in variables. Okay. User equals. Oops. Post. Username. Password equals post password. Okay. All right. Now, there's something we forgot to do that we're going to have to create real fast. We'll go ahead and go into the includes directory, create a new file called connections. Uh, let's just call it db underscore connect dot php okay all right and there we're going to make our connections to the database in this file so we're going to store it in this file so we don't have to keep writing it out so db equals new mysql improved since I'm working on my local machine, it will be local host, the username, password, and the database we're going to be using, or die error with connection. Okay. Okay, let's just make sure this works. Okay, blog includes db connection php. Hmm. Oh, okay. I just did DB connect. Okay, we don't see anything. That means it worked. Okay. So let's go back into our login script. And we're going to include... database connection okay so include we have to go out of this directory into the includes directory and then we go <coughs> then we grab the file now now this is connected to the database so now that we have let's check to make sure that uh, there's values for these uh, two see if there's actually information stored in there because if, if you check right now check right now if you click nothing happens enter some bogus data click nothing happens so let's check to make sure that there's information actually uh, stored in these variables so if let's do it like this if empty user or you know what we can just do this
empty password. Okay. Let's just go ahead and echo out. Missing information. Okay, save that. Let's see if this works. Okay, see it's still missing. It's still uh, displaying missing information because there was no password. So if I go admin, admin, nothing will happen. Let's do it. Okay. So, do an else. So, if this is not missing, we got to clean up. Um, we have to make sure these are uh, these input values are going to be safe to be stored in the database. So. We can do it like this user equals DB real escape string. Oops, I was kind of jumping ahead of myself. User. Also, let's do this before that. User equals strip tags. This will uh, prevent uh, nasty little people trying to insert um, JavaScript to to uh, kind of hack into your uh, admin control panel. And then this function, real escape string, will prevent bad uh, SQL injections. So let's copy that. Change this to P word. This to password. Same thing for this one. Now remember, this is the most, and this tutorial is going to be the most rudimentary uh, way of doing it. So, of course, there's more secure ways in setting up your login system. I would implore you to do that, but this is just for tutorial uh, purposes. So, remember, when you're putting this out on your own live server, you might want to take the extra steps of making sure you're done. Uh, everything is more secure okay so now that we got that out the way let's run a uh, query query equals db query select user id Name. Let's select the user. Let's select the user uh, ID and username from the user table where username equals user and. Password equals password. Okay, so what this query is going to do is going to grab the username and user ID from the users table where the username equals the user and the password equals the password. But before we can do that, you get it. 
I forgot one critical step. You got a MD hash, MD5 hash, the password. So if you remember, we already did that in the database. So to make these match, we got an MD5 hash that. Okay. So let's echo out query num rows. See if there's anybody in the database. Okay, admin, admin. We got one. Okay, let's say admin Adam zero. Okay, so we know that works. Okay, let's go back to the start of this script right at the beginning. I'm going to add session start. Now we need this because we're going to be working with sessions so the browser and the server know that once you logged in that long as it's open you don't have to re-log in every time. Okay, so we're going to do a little check if query num rows does not equal one now let's go ahead and make sure it's an identical match equals one we'll do session user ID well first things first we'll need to fetch all the information out of it so I'm not going to use So while loop while row equals query fetch object Okay, so session user ID equals row user ID. Okay. And then we're going to send it the user to location index.php. Exit the script. And okay. You know what? This. We can take that, put that there. Okay. So and then we can do this else statement. So this statement will run if there's if uh, numbers does not equal one, we're just going to echo. Let's just copy this. Okay. 
Let's save that. Let's see if this works. All right, on line 23, we've got an error. 23. Oh, forgot that. Refresh. Admin. Password. This should be wrong, so we should get an error message. Okay. So admin. Admin. Hmm. Probably just spelled that wrong. Okay, so you see that it sent us to the index.php page. That means that we are logged in. All right, so I'm going to stop it here for today. I'm going to pick up uh, creating the admin page.